Okay, I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Geld show Dr. Ben Tichelar, whose main goal is helping people turn their dreams into action. In fact, he's got a very, very popular book translated into many languages called Dream, Dare, Do. And it's about effective self-management, which, as those of you who've listened to the Goldstein on Geld show know that I'm a firm believer that bad investing is not always the result of bad investments, but rather the way that people handle themselves. Ben, real pleasure to have you. Good morning. Nice to be there. So one of the problems I have in my day job as a financial advisor is I'm often trying to encourage people or cajole them or excite them into just managing the way that they manage money better. But right. I get a lot of resistance. So maybe you could help me out. When I see someone and I tell them, listen, you know, maybe you want to think about spending a little less because you spend more than you earn. And, you know, they laugh it off or, you know, they, they don't seem so interested. What could I do to, to encourage them or make them a little better at self-management? Okay. Well, yeah, self-management, that's the topic that I've been studying for the last about 20 years. And not actually always in relation with the money, you know, but uh, in general. And you see that people have a hard time managing themselves in general because, we kind of overestimate the control that we have over our own thoughts and behavior in many uh, occasions. Um, problem is, you know, that much of our behavior is not controlled by conscious thought, but it's controlled by all kinds of automatic processes and emotions that go on in our head and go on in our brain. And, you know, we, tiny, we kind of underestimate the influence that has over our behavior. So that's just a fancy word for habits, what you just said, right? Well, not just habits. You know, there's habits on the one side. That's, you know, the behavior that you develop through repetition during your life. But there are also a lot of emotional um, triggered behaviors that go on. And, you know, that's not, you could actually, it's sort of between reflexes and habits on the other hand. Uh, tell me about reflexes. That's, that's the first time I've heard someone refer to it as that. What do you mean by, uh, by reflexes when you're talking, for example, about how people handle themselves? We have a lot of hardwired emotional reflexes in our brain. So when we, for instance, lose certainty or when we lose status, you know, our, our brain kind of goes berserk. Neurological research, for instance, shows that if someone threatens your status, so if someone gives you an advice that you didn't ask for, you know, someone steps up to you and say, hey, can I give you some small advice? You know, in many cases, we, uh, we see that we uh, experience that as a status threat. That's how people call it. That's how psycho psychologists call it. And it's been shown that in the brain that gives the same response as someone sneaking up to you from behind in a dark alley, you know, and the, all the, the fear responses, the automatic fear responses in your brain, brain immediately turn on. And um, it's very hard to still, you know, maintain, how do you call it, some rationality in, in those occasions. Well, so let's dig into this a little more because you described the term that when a person loses certainty. Right. The financial business, there is nothing that is certain. I'm constantly telling people, listen, you know, we can talk about risk and potential. But, you know, when you use words like that, it means that I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. And how can someone ultimately make a real decision if he's constantly suffering from this lack of certainty? Well, you know, that's, I think, the problem in many cases when it comes to uh, business decisions, but also when it comes to relationship decisions and also to financial decisions. And you see that always people will be looking for certainty, also in your field. I think that, you know, the fact that there are financial experts, for instance, where people, for instance, listen to this radio show, shows that people want certainty. They want to hear, you know, something that you maybe tell about what's going to happen, what you think is going to happen in the next few weeks or next few months, and they cling to it like it is something certain. Although you are very clear that's just, you know, an opinion maybe. or uh, So why would people cling to it? That's a great question. Is it because I wear a tie that say, oh, he must yeah. be pretty smart? <laughs> that's so it's helpful, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they know that, you know, the pundits don't know, right? And the, the, the real truth is that there are people who get on TV or in the news or in the media and the, the radio, and they talk about what they believe is going to happen. But that's just one opinion. The regular guy who's trying to save for retirement, lacking certainty, is he just going to have to grasp on to someone because it makes him feel better? Yeah, I guess that there are a lot of unconscious, automatic, irrational decisions going on. Of course, there's been a lot of research uh, has been done in that field, for instance, by, by people like uh, Daniel Kahneman, for instance, Nobel Prize laureate. And uh, time and time again, it shows that although we think of ourselves or like to think of ourselves as rational and uh, consciously making decisions, 
in fact, you know, all the research shows that's just not true and that we are managed by our emotions in most cases. I'm glad you brought up uh, Danny Kahneman. He actually was very kind when I was working on the book about chess and investing with Susan right. Polgar. We had the opportunity to talk to Kahneman. He was actually a former guest on this radio show twice. Yeah, I think I think it's great. He's one of the great researchers in the field. Yeah. And he said to me, uh, "We said, I said, Danny, I've I've actually been using your research to see how behavioral finance affects chess players," and he was very interested and. In, you know, our connection. He said, Doug, I'd like to read that chapter. So I was so excited, you know, a Nobel Prize winner going to re read the chapter yeah, on exactly. behavioral finance. And I when we sent in the chapter, he got back to us and he, his only comments were about our chess analysis. I guess he liked our behavioral finance analysis. It turns out he's a fantastic chess player too. We're talking with Dr. Ben Tichelar, who is the author of the fantastic book, Dream, Dare, Do, which is about effective self-management. Ben's been talking to us so far, maybe more theoretically, about the concepts related to dealing with making decisions in a low certainty environment, for example, investing in the stock market. But Ben, I'd like to give people a real takeaway. Your expertise is helping people to develop good habits, habits that will make them better at what they do. Give us a takeaway. What can people say, you know, I listened to Ben Tichler on the Goldstein on Gelt show, and here's how I changed my life. Let's give some life-changing advice. Well, the first thing that you actually should do is just decide which behavior you want to perform on a regular basis. And that's something that you really have to study. I think, you know, if you listen to experts like yourself or listen to other experts in the financial field, you probably can learn about what, what a few good investing habits would be. And the problem for most people is that actually they, on the first, in the in in first place, they don't know what those habits are. That's one thing. So that's something you really should study. And the other thing is they don't know how to stick to those habits. And actually, those are the two most important points if you want to make a big change in your life and also in the way you do your uh, investments. So first thing would be, uh, what are real effective habits when it comes to financing, uh, to finance and to financial investments? So that's something that you can study by looking at experts or learning from experts. But you could also look at your own past and see what you have done over the last few years that was really effective. Because then you know that's a sort of behavior that you can actually perform. It's within your range. That's something that's important. It has worked for you in your situation, which is also very important. And, you know, it's something that you actually believe you can do. And that last part is also very important. If people don't believe that they can actually perform the habit, they will never stick to it. Yeah, I think, I think in a case like that, they have to choose a, a simpler habit. You know, let, let me ask you more advice. Maybe, maybe you can help me out because let me tell you one of the things that happens. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of... Uh, good coaching about how I can coach my clients. But a lot of times I'll sit with a couple in the financial planning environment. And it turns out, for example, that maybe the husband spends way too much money, but the wife is more frugal. And I okay. talk to them about things like habits and I show them charts and graphs. But, you know, you're dealing with two people and maybe one of them says, well, you know, I can improve my habits. But of course, she's the one who's already got good habits. H how do you help a couple, you know, two people who really are a team to together be better at this? Well, you know, in the end, it comes down to the fact that you have, with the three of you, have to decide on a very simple habit that people can stick to. And I, I guess there will be a lot of negotiation going on there as well. In the end, of course, all behavior is personal. So, you know, you, you cannot decide on a, on a habit for two people. You know, every single person in the equation should stick to the habit that you decide upon. And it should be something that is within the range of both people then. You know, it should be a simple habit that both can understand and both can actually implement on a daily basis. That's what we're talking about. So that could, for instance, mean I'm not a financial expert, but say that you want to save a certain percentage of your monthly income or you want to save a certain percentage of the raise that you get. Or, for instance, you want to get rid of debt and have a certain strategy for that. You know, the, the strategy in the end that you have to implement should be very simple, understandable and you know, you should be able to implement it both. All right. You know, we're nearing the end of our time, but I want to ask you one last question because I think that it looks like you, you have, have a very ambitious goal in a, in a program you have called a one-day MBA. I Guys know. I know have worked for years to get their MBA. How can someone learn it all in one day? Well, of course, it's a sort of a pun title. What we do actually in a program is that we give you an overview of the most important MBA law like MBA is theories that are around in the world. So there's a lot of good management stuff. And I meet a lot of entrepreneurs or managers 
that actually, you know, got to their position, not by studying business or studying management, but just being good in their, in their field, for instance, finance or other fields. And interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, you know, if you have a lot of experience and then you get taught the most important management theories in just a day, you already have the experience that is needed to understand what it's about. So you can learn a lot in, you know, in little time. We are talking, we are covering a range of topics now in about 10 minutes, you know, and when you have a, a whole day with um, intelligent people with a lot of business experience, you can teach them a lot. So what we do is give them an overview of what is really important to know about business, and, you know, we can manage that in one day. All right. That sounds like a, uh, a fantastic program people should check out. So, Ben, we are now out of time, but tell me in the last few seconds, how can people follow you, learn more about your books and your services and, uh, and the research and writing that you're doing? Oh, it's very, very easy. I got an international website. It's www.tichelar.com. And you can find everything there. Okay, and we will put a link to that at the show notes of today's show at goldsteinongelt.com. Ben Tichler, thanks so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world. But if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.